I'm explorer Ed Stafford, and I've put myself through extreme tests of endurance and isolation to become a survival expert. But surviving on my own, in the middle of nowhere, with just a camera, has become well within my comfort zone. That was easy. I want to evolve, to take things a step further and find out what I'm really made of. So I've decided to go up against the world's toughest survivalists. This time, I'm testing myself against military survival instructor John Hudson. At high altitude in the monsoon-soaked peaks of the Indian Himalayas. John is the guru of all survival instructors. He wrote the handbook that pilots use if they go down in aeroplanes. Have you been doing training? Are you fit at the moment? As you know, mate, I'm Royal Air Force, so I am... Oh, so not fit at all. <laughs> OK, gentlemen. Welcome to the Himalayas. <laughs> you see now that little pinnacle coming through? Oh, yes, yeah. You're going up there. In terms of dangers, what are we going to be facing? The altitude's going to be a real challenge. The thinner the air, the harder it is to breathe, and the more difficult it's going to be to function. And just to add to that, you've got black bears. They're going to have to conquer three distinct environments on the way. First, steep, wet, dense foothills, as they're forced to gain altitude. Once at altitude, they're going to find huge, barren boulder fields. From there, they'll see their last challenge. A giant wall of Himalayan rock that needs to be scaled. After they summit, the final stretch will be a downhill descent to a valley. This will lead to a river. Check. First to meet me on the bridge on the other side wins. I think we need to get some ground early and get a better view and then pick the easiest route. John, immediately shot off the top of the hill to the west. But I want to push over to the east, to the right-hand side. The east of the valley looks less steep. I'm literally running from rock to rock. This is an absolutely huge jump. I've got no option but to make it. What's on there? Jackpot, we found some water. This is worth a few minutes of effort and exploration because spring water that's popped up straight out of the mountain granite, well, it's going to be safe to drink straight away. So I'll have to faff about with it. This is bottom rock's just super slippy, isn't it? I think I know why all these blue balls are here. Definitely something dead down here somewhere. That's the remnants of some kind of mountain goat. But the best news ever is it's fast flowing spring water. As long as it's down here, I can drink higher up. I'm a good metre or two above the dead thing, and I couldn't smell anything. So I'm confident this spring water here is safe to drink. I'm thinking that although that decomposed beast down there stinks to high heaven, there might be an opportunity with it. That's fat. That's a keeper. Well, that means to me is I can have heat higher up the mountain than the trees grow. A fat lamp. And that's what I'm going to try and do with this. Let's get out, mate. It stinks. Whew. Yeah. Win-win. Water. Fuel for later. Happy days. Happy days. I've just seen the back end of a snake disappear into here. I just saw the back end of it, so I don't know whether it's venomous or not. But a snake is meat, and if there's a snake in here, I need to make an effort to get it. There it is. In advance of getting a fire going, this is an amount of meat that I don't want to let waste, and so... I think I'm going to try and eat this raw. Tastes a bit like oysters. Sort of phlegmy. Snake sushi. 
Right, I think we should move on. I'm going to find somewhere around here and set up camp. And I don't want to keep busting up and busting up because I've got to acclimatise. Tonight, we're going to have a centrally heated house because we've got a bit higher and a bit cooler. So what I might do is move this to granite and I'll be able to use it to block out any breeze that blows in. There we go, wall. The next job, get a file it. There's more where that came from too, but for now, this is enough. I have never lit a fire in such damp conditions in my life. Altitude also has a massive effect on, um, on lighting a fire. There's less oxygen in the air, and therefore, just physically lighting a fire, fire by friction or otherwise, is harder. There's a, um, an Inuit method of um, fire lighting. The Inuits use their mouths to push down on the, on the um, drill, and then rather than use a bow, they use cordage and they, and I could use my lace for that. This might work actually. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> It was a definite large noise. Definitely something big. Is this a kept bear cave? There's no evidence. I just need to be vigilant, don't I? Oh, there is a bear that was right here. That was last night. There is absolutely no way of telling where the bear is now. The valley is full of mountain crows. So I'm going to see if I can add a bit of meat to my diet as well. Every day, the camera guy puts new batteries in this, the microphone. Because he's a Himalayan monsoon, he's wrapped it in a couple of condoms. My plan is to use these to make a catapult to kill some of these crows that are around here. It was definitely eaten back in like the war years when rationing was happening, but people just prefer chicken these days. Yeah, there we go, look at that. That's a catapult, isn't it? I'm going to have to take a little bit of leather off one of my boots. I think it's ready for battle. Quite a few of them are on the ground up there. This will be our best chance, I reckon. I think I got it in the head. Let's get ourselves a crow kebab. This does indeed take me straight up to the pass, which is still slightly covered in clouds at the top, but that is good. In order to scale that, I've got to make a rucksack because I know above the tree line, I'm definitely not going to be able to get any firewood or provisions. So in order to carry everything up there, I'm going to make a rucksack. It's called a Royston. Works out. It was invented by a chap called Tom Royston. These are nettles of Himalayan proportions, and they've got stings of uh, Himalayan proportions as well. I can um, use the fibres in them, weave them together, and make cordage. If this climbing rope out of nettles is anything to go by, then this series of challenges is fulfilling its aim of pushing me outside my own comfort zone and forcing me to adapt to a level that I've not gone before certainly giving me new skills, but it's also given me a new way of looking at things, which is why these challenges are so valuable and so meaningful to me, because they force me to re-evaluate myself and see where I am compared to, for example, John Hudson. <clears throat> it just gives me a base from which to put anything that I want to on top of it. This is the fat that was on that stinking carcass when I went into that underground spring, break it up a little bit. And all it'll do is act like the wax on a candle. This is going to be the wick. But you can see it's starting to bubble. 
the aim of the game at the moment and get the actual wick itself ignited. If I'm having a drama up on the hill, I want something that's going to light easily. This is it. There's no coming back. Listen to that thunder. This is the biggest hand grip that I've found in the last hour. My fingers are exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm mentally shattered. Somehow I need to secure myself to the rope. If I can make my backpack into a sort of like a portal ledge, then maybe I can make myself a little V that I could spend the night in. There's a little shrub down here. I'm just going to see if I can tie the rope around it. OK, I've managed to secure the pack frame to the bottom of this little shrub. And um, it's holding, which I'm quite happy about. The rain is coming in. I would say this portal ledge is an absolute lifesaver, but it looks like I'm here for the night. Ah, it's probably been thundering for the last two hours. This might not be pleasant, but I, somehow I need to go up right now. It's a 50-50 Y-junction in the valley because I can't see where they lead. Can't stop here and think about it all day. I'm gonna have to go. I'm going that way. Wow! <laughs> the things you do for a living, eh? <laughs> Come on, John Hudson! So I've uh, come over that summit. I think I can win. <laughs> I'm on top of the world. But the thing that matters is that from now on, it's all downhill. Happy days. I'm trying to pick up the pace without going too kamikaze. I can hear a river. I really hope it's the river. I'm taking quite big risks now by running fast. Every second counts. I've got no idea if John is ahead of me or behind me. A bridge. Ah, well done, mate. Get your breath. Uh, hello, Woody. Hello, mate. Uh, How was that? Uh, steep, slippy, long. Where's Ed? I'm oh, sorry, mate. He's pipped you. Uh, fair play. How you doing? Hey, man. That was um, epic, I think. Well done, buddy. Disappointed not to have won, obviously, but well done to Ed. You know, he's earned that. Good on him. Good on him. I've learned a huge amount from every single opponent and I've evolved as a person. I'm privileged to have been in this position to go up against them all. Very privileged. <laughs>